This is The Lockpicking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is a high-security lock all the way from Turkey. It's the DAF brand model DBS02 Euro Profile Cylinder. You'll see that I've already partially disassembled it, that's so we can get the rest of the cylinder apart more quickly after picking. I'll start by noting that while this is a Turkish company and the lock is sold in Turkey, I quickly discovered that it appears to be identical to an Italian lock, the SecureMe K3. My suspicion is that they're both made in the same Chinese factory. So, what about this lock is so special? Well, it has 14 active elements that we'll need to address if we're going to pick it open. There are 10 dimple pins in two rows of five, and then there are four sliders that are controlled by this track cut into the key. As such, it should present some challenges in picking. So, let's start picking, and once we get it open, I will take it apart to show you what's inside. Using just a normal wiper insert for tension, and I'll be using this multi-pick dimple pick. I'm starting on the left row of dimple pins. Click out of one. Click out of two. Click out of three. Four is binding tightly. I might have overset four. Okay, I think I might have it set now. Number five, got to click there. Okay, let's move over to the left or right row of sliders. One, two, three is binding. Click out of three. Nothing on four. Five. Okay, might have gotten a little click out of five. Back to the beginning. Nothing on one. Two is binding. Keep slipping off number two. I might have had it set. Okay, I tried to go back in and I'm stuck on number one, so we'll address that one. And I think we might have set all the pins. We just got a nice deep false set. Let's start working on the sliders. I'm going to use this standard hook in 18 thousandths, insert it sideways, and twist it to set the sliders. Okay, little click out of the first one. Nothing on the second. Click out of the third. And little click on the fourth. Back to the beginning. Nothing on one. Having some trouble getting behind two. Oh, I just got behind two. And it looks like we got it open. Okay, let's take this apart, and then I will show you what's inside. Okay, first thing we need to do is remove a clip here. And I'm having trouble getting to it while the core is in that position, so let's move it a bit. Okay, we have the clip out, and we should just need a follower, and hopefully the core will slide out. Okay, we have all of our pins there. The first thing I'm going to do is dump the sidebar out, and the sidebar springs, and those sliders should be retained by the key. So we're free to start dumping these key pins out. Now there are more key pins than we have slots here, but I'll just have to make do. Okay, we have the first seven out. 
And the last three, I'm just gonna put up high here. Okay, now to get the sliders out. But before I do that, I wanna show you something very interesting. There are false gates in these sliders. However, if we look carefully inside of here, we'll see that there is absolutely no way that any of those false gates can come into play. I don't know if it's possible for you to see that, but none of, those, none of these sliders will move over far enough for a false gate to come into play. So while they do have false gates, none of them can possibly ever fall into the sidebar so it might as well not have any. Okay, those sliders and the slider springs came out. Let me just give you a close-up of one of these sliders. You'll see we have one false gate and one true gate. Unfortunately, those false gates really don't do anything for pick resistance. Okay, let's get those driver pins out now. Okay, I believe they are all standard. I didn't feel anything other than standard pins. Yep, these are all standard pins. I probably just could have dumped them, but just in case we come across something else, I'll take them out carefully. Okay, and all those springs are the same. So let me give you a close-up of everything here. First, for the pins, you can see all of our key pins and driver pins are standard. There are little shelves on the key pins, and the reason for them is so the dimple pins don't drop too far into the keyway. That's actually pretty common on dimple locks. Then we have these sliders, which do have false gates. Unfortunately, none of those false gates can ever come into play, so there's really no reason to put them on there. Moving over, we can see the sidebar. Nothing really unusual about this. These are the two sidebar springs. And moving over to the core, we have our 10 holes for the dimple pins you'll see there's a small flat along the top. Now normally that's done to make locks operate a little bit more smoothly when there's poor tolerances. And don't get me wrong, there are poor tolerances in this lock, but when you have two rows of pins next to each other, having a flat like that is actually necessary or the lock will definitely bind up. We have one small little piece of drill protection right next to pin number one. Turning around, we can see the holes into which the sliders and slider springs go. And then we have the sidebar slot. So nothing terribly unusual or interesting about this lock. While it is very, very complicated and certainly is marketed as a high security lock, there really are better options out there. In any case, that's all I have for you today. If you do have any questions or comments about this, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.